five films set in the mind, in the mind, in the mind. Hello Internet, my name's Lave, and this week it's collab time again. So I was contacted by Noah Howes who asked me if I was interested in doing a collab with him and Elliot Cohen, two fellow YouTubers who are hugely passionate about films with great content on their channels. You should go and check them out by clicking here. So once again, the format is that we have chosen our top five films of our chosen genre or topic. Elliot is doing top five films about painters. I can't even think of one film off the top of my head so good luck with that. Noah is doing top five mystery films and you can check out their videos by clicking here but I'll also put a reminder at the end of this video. I've decided to do my top five favorite films that are set in the mind or at least explore the psyche of a particular character so without further ado let's get on with it. Number five. Being John Malkovich. So Being John Malkovich was released in 1999 and is directed by one of my favourite directors, Spike Jones. but this film is also written by the wonderfully weird Charlie Kaufman. John Cusack stars as Craig Schwartz, a struggling puppeteer living in New York who has to take a job as a filing clerk for an administration company on the seventh and a half floor of this building in New York. Yeah, seven and a half. And in his office he finds a little door which contains a tunnel which when you crawl into it takes you into the mind of John Malkovich who is playing a fictional version of himself in this film. So once you crawl in you get to see and experience the world through John Malkovich's eyes for 15 minutes at least until you're ejected onto the side of the road on the outskirts of New York. In an attempt to impress a co-worker, a super sexy biatch called Maxine played by Catherine Keener who's sort of playing the complete opposite opposite to her character in A 40 Year Old Virgin. She's really quite a bitch and she plays her part really well. Despite being a bitch, Craig has this infatuation with her so he can't wait to tell her about this discovery which she doesn't quite believe at first but when she finds out that he's telling the truth she takes advantage of it and the pair go into business and charge the public 200 bucks a pop to have a ride and be John Malkovich. Craig's unhealthy infatuation for Maxine grows and gets further complicated by his wife played by an ugly Cameron Diaz who is also really really good in this film. She also develops an infatuation with Maxine and a weird love triangle develops. In fact it's a love square because John Malkovich is involved unknowingly but he's involved as well. Even as I say the premise out loud it's absolutely insane but utterly original and it does get a bit dark at stages but it's absolutely hilarious all of the way through. John Malkovich is so brilliant in it. As with all of Charlie Kaufman's screenplays, it's open to interpretation, but essentially I think that it's a story about him. It's essentially about his desire to be someone else, if only for a little while, and to be recognized as an artist and to be loved. It's absolutely insane, but a great ride through his imagination. I absolutely love it. If I had to describe it in one word, I'd have to say that it's Malkovich. Number four. Total Recall, the original. So Total Recall is an adaptation of Philip K. Dick's sci-fi novel We Can Remember It For You Wholesale. It's set in 2048 and stars Arnold Schwarzenegger as Doug Quaid, a construction worker who's really unhappy with his life. He's got a sense that he was meant for something more and he keeps having this recurring dream of living another life on Mars. So he decides to visit a company called Recall Incorporated who specialize in implanting memories into their customers minds allowing them to live out their fantasies. Unfortunately something goes wrong and they unlock a part of Quaid's mind which was meant to remain hidden which kicks off a whole series of events with loads of people trying to catch and kill Quaid so he goes on the run on Earth and has to get to Mars to discover the truth. Or does he? Uh. So this film is directed by Paul Verhoeven and you get his trademark over the top violence but ultimately this is just an extremely fun action movie. It's got fantastic practical effects and at the time it had state of the art digital effects and it's all wrapped up in an 80s early 90s depiction of the future. I just love it. On top of that you've got a fantastic cast which includes Sharon Stone, Michael Ironside and Ronnie Cox 
Fox and Arnold Schwarzenegger at the height of his powers and of course you get a load of his trademark quotes and of course other people jump in as well. I think this is one of the most quotable films from my past. Howdy stranger, get ready for a big surprise. You are not you, you are me. No shit. Welcome to Johnny Cam. Open your mind. Two weeks. You will be lobotomized. Hey, Betty's the name. I've got five kids to feed. Two weeks. Ooh, baby, you make me wish I had three hands. I think you're doing just fine with two. Two weeks. <laughs> Bastard. Consider the, the, the divorce. We hope you enjoyed the ride, huh? <laughs> so get your ass to Mars, boy. So get your ass to Mars, boy. Get your ass to Mars. <laughs> oh, I can literally go on forever. <laughs> I, do, I do love this film. It was a huge part of my childhood. I love the fact that it left it open-ended so you can interpret it whichever way you want. Every time I watch this, it brings a smile to my face and that's why it's my number four. Number three. Paprika. So Paprika was released in 2006 and is a Japanese animation by the legendary Satoshi Kon, whose other feature films like Perfect Blue, Millennium Actress and Tokyo Godfathers all feature characters where their realities blend with fantasy. And Paprika follows suit and tells the story of Chiba Atsuko, who is a therapist who uses technology called the DC Mini to enter the minds of her patients, which enables her to psychoanalyze their dreams and fantasies in an attempt to help them and treat them. However, one day the technology is stolen and complete chaos ensues as normal people's lives are completely disrupted as their realities begin to merge with their nightmares. So Atsuko and her team are joined by Konakawa, a troubled detective who is one of her patients. They join forces to go out and track down the technology and find the perpetrators. So this was Satoshi Kon's last feature film before he tragically passed away in 2010. And even though it's not considered his best film it's got his stamp all over it his trademarks are there to be seen i do think it's a sort of love letter to himself and to his fans it's got a load of references to his other films and and other genres i love the fact that it references pop culture as well it's a visual masterpiece that has to be experienced it's a completely wild ride through his imagination that makes doctor strange look like an episode of friends in fact a lot of people would argue that it inspired the next film on my list. You could even say that an idea was implanted into the director. Number two. Inception. So I absolutely had to include this movie in this video because I recently did a top five modern sci-fi classics list and had to cut this one from it and I really regretted it but I get to talk about it now so let's go. So Inception was released in 2010 and is directed by Christopher Nolan who after making Warner Brothers a billion billion dollars with The Dark Knight they pretty much said here you go just go and make whatever film you want to make and Inception is what we got and it's a corporate espionage, action, sci-fi, adventure, thriller, it's all of those things, it's brilliant. It stars Leonardo DiCaprio as Dom Cobb who is a bit of a shady character actually, he uses technology to go into people's minds and steal their secrets while they're dreaming. After one of his jobs goes wrong, him and his team get hired to infiltrate the dream of a very powerful CEO and have to perform the reverse of what they normally do. They have to go in and implant an idea in a process they call Inception. So I think it's fair to say that a lot of people have Inception fatigue. It's one of those films that has been hugely talked about and discussed ever since it's been released, but that's just a measure of how successful it was and how good it is. When I cast my mind back to 2010 I just remember hugely anticipating this film and the fact that it delivered, in fact it succeeded on my expectations is absolutely extraordinary. First of all the cast are just outstanding. You've got Leonardo DiCaprio, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Ellen Page, Marion Cotillard, Tom Hardy, Michael Caine, Tom Berenger, it just goes on and they're all 
amazing in it and then you've got Hans Zimmer's score and music which is just being copied over and over again it's in pretty much every film since then Boom! the visuals are just gorgeous both the practical effects and the CGI is groundbreaking you hadn't seen anything like it the story is a bit complex but it's always entertaining and fascinating and the writing is just superb I know Christopher Nolan often gets criticized for having cold films but I would argue that Dom Cobb's backstory in this is actually quite tragic and emotional but ultimately this film is about dreams and the way that they portray them in a realistic way but still it's the most surreal thing it's an actual trip into a mise on a beam it's unbelievable absolutely deserves my number two slot number one eternal sunshine of the spotless mind oh, i love this film so much so eternal sunshine of the spotless mind was released in 2004 and is the dream team pairing of charlie kaufman as the writer and the director michelle gondry it tells the story of joel played by jim carrey who is absolutely devastated to find out that his girlfriend clementine played by kate winslet has had a procedure done to erase him and their relationship from her memory. In his heartbroken and angry state, he tracks down the company that performed the procedure and then decides to have it done himself. And then we go on a journey through his mind as we relive their tumultuous relationship and he begins to discover why he fell in love with her in the first place as his memories of her fade away. It's just incredible such a great concept i can't even begin to express how much i love this film some people might find it a bit somber and it is but it's also uplifting and it's incredibly poignant i think it's a fantastic study of relationships and how and why we fall in love and how and why we fall out of love first of all the cast are just fantastic jim carrey is brilliant as the introverted joel this was the first film that made me think of him as an actor and not just a comedian he's absolutely brilliant in this film and he's complemented by an excellent Kate Winslet as Clementine who is extremely extrovert so they really are polar opposites of each other but I totally bought their relationship when they were together and I totally bought the disdain that they had towards each other as they break up it's just one of those films that if it's on and I start watching it I can't not watch it until the end I always find something new in it as well whether that's something in the narrative or in the visual cues i absolutely love how they've depicted the mind and as you travel through it with joel as things are getting erased there's some fantastic practical effects in there there's some really good cgi as well it's just an incredibly smart and well put together film but at the same time it's incredibly quirky and eccentric and it really does feel like you're traveling through the imagination of charlie kaufman and michelle gondry i absolutely love 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 this film it's just wonderful if ever i was to make a film or write a film i'd want it to be like this it's just amazing seriously if you haven't seen this film i don't know how but you have to see it it's one of my favorites ever so there we go that's my top five films set in the mind what do you think about it do you agree with it do you disagree with it if you know of any films that are like this then please tell me in the comments so i can watch it i love these types of films even though they're all quite different and please don't forget to check out Elliot and Noah's videos head over there like share subscribe all that stuff and tell them that Lave sent you and thanks very much for watching this video I really do appreciate it if you can give it a like and don't forget to share the Lave and get your ass to Mars get your ass to Mars